And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And then there's the statement of salvation, which is found in John 3, verses 16 and 17, which says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Let us pray. Eternal God, a loving Father, it is once again that we come to your throne. Lord, with thy heads lowly bow. Father, thank you this morning for waking us up, for giving us a brand new day, starting us on our way to come this very way. We ask thee, Lord, for your blessings, for your keeping power, your saving grace. What is done here at 823 Browns Ferry Street this morning, be to your name's honor and glory. And I pray in Jesus' holy name, amen. Find yourself 
Who's going to be so I direct your attention to these and other announcements in your bulletin. In closing, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. Amen. I'll use my preacher's voice. They're working on the microphone this morning, getting some kinks out. But I'm glad that we, we can lift up our voices today. Amen. I'm glad that we have breath in our bodies today. I'm glad we have life from the life giver. I'm glad to be in God's house today. I, I'm like right Elder Curtis. I'm glad. Anybody glad? Anybody thankful this morning? Anybody praising God that he, you're not what you were seven days ago? God didn't leave you alone. That God didn't leave you to yourself. That God has brought us a mighty long way. This time we just have a few announcements. A few announcements. Let's bring the mic up here. All right, all right. Snap it in place. All right. Just have a few, few announcements. We're getting everything under, under control. Holy Ghost, take control. Amen. We want to remind you of our community guest day outreach. I'm sorry, community outreach. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a community guest day. We have to plan one of those other cousins. But community outreach Sabbath is next Sabbath, October 15. What Sabbath? October. Next Sabbath. So we need all hands on deck. That's why you see the flyer with the hands on there. We're going to give back because God has given so much to us. We, we've been excited under Elder Drake's community leader program that she's been leading us out in and we we just been grateful that we've been able to touch so many when we go out when we've gone out in our bible work and prayer walk we have run across individuals that say yeah we know who you guys are we come to your church you feed us you take care of us this is the work of christ and we must continue doing this work because it's the avenue for preparing hearts to receiving the word of god and so we ask that you come out and support. Matter of fact, uh, Thursday is where the groundwork is done. Thursday, what day did I say? Thursday. You want to come out Thursday morning? We're usually out. The van is usually here 10, by 10 a.m. We're usually bagging by 11 a.m. And we have a good time as we prepare the bags with hands of love. Then on Sabbath, we come out and give with hearts of love. So we invite you to be a part of that. That's a part of our outreach evangelistic program. Also, beginning on next Sabbath, we will start a new preaching series, the Abraham series. God has been working on me. Come on, say amen. amen. And as he's working on the preacher, then he plans to work with us, the people of God. And I believe what the people of God need more than ever in these last days is to learn to live the life of faith. We're going to talk about that. There's a reason why Abraham's called the father of faith. And if we're going to be in the faithful at the end, we've got to learn some lessons from Abraham. So that, we'll begin that series on next Sabbath, October 15th. You want to be in the house. We plan on having our streaming services. We are have been upgrading our media. I know we're working some kinks out, but we got some sound. Come on and say amen. Yeah. I'd rather be working on too much sound than working on too little sound. So we work it, we work, we work it on, on evening it out. So continue to pray as they're working back there. They're trying to get everything even keeled. And so God's going to bless us. And we've been able to upgrade our streaming services. Go on and say amen. So we got not only Facebook Live, we're supposed to be streaming now, YouTube Live. So I know some of you that haven't been at you missed church or for whatever reason and you had to wait till it was uploaded on YouTube after Sabbath or sometime in, in the weekend. But we praise God we're going to be a, a live stream church. Come on and say amen. And so we plan on taking the gospel into every home that's open. And that's one of the ways we can do that is by reaching the media world. And so God's going to bless us. God's going to be with us as we continue going forward. And then for our board members, we will have board meeting on tomorrow at 10 a.m. But we won't be here physically, we'll be virtual. And so we ask that you log in. We're going to be on our church Zoom account, and we want to see every board member there as we continue to advance the Lord's call. But God's going to be with us. 
He's here in the house. So, some of you still looking for him. He's here. Some of you may have not felt, felt him yet. The Holy Ghost is touching you. I'm glad Jesus has invited us like he invites the disciples of old. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what everybody wants. I don't know what you've gone through this week, but there's rest for your weary soul. I don't know what's troubled you, but there's rest for all your cares. I don't know what your heart is carrying. But there's rest because we have a sin bearer named Jesus. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me today. He says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Anybody thankful for rest today? Amen. Sabbath rest. Physical rest. Spiritual rest. Rest in Jesus. I'm so glad we can be like Daniel. He was sleeping in the lion's den. We, we can be like Peter who slept in prison. We can be like Jesus who slept in the, in the storm. No matter what your circumstances are, no matter what you're facing, you can rest in Jesus today knowing that God will take care of you. Do you know that today? And so you're in the right place at the right time. Matter, matter of fact, we want to recognize if we have any first-time visitors in the house today, any first-time visitors, we want to recognize you today. If this is your first time here, just raise your hand. Glad to see you. God bless you. I see some coming in raising their hand. I, uh, familiar faces over there. Let me start with, with my friend right here. First time visitor. Yes, can you let us know your name and where you're worshiping from? We'll be glad to welcome you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Rose. My home is in Fairmont. Wow. But I've lived in Huntsville, long enough to call it home. Okay. But I recently. Look no more. <laughs> we found it. We, we tell everybody you're a visitor once and then you're family. So you, you step through the door a visitor, you sat in your seat a family member. God bless you and we welcome you today. I saw some other hands. I got some friends over there. I will let them come in their own way. Let us know who you are, where you're coming from. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. We're glad to have you. Madam. Your mother has joined our church. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we pray to hopefully see you guys more, and we're glad to have your mama. We'll take good, good care of her. Oh, do we have any other first time visitors? Did I see a hand? Did I see a hand? But maybe it's not your first time. Maybe this is your second. Or somebody spent. Pastor Reynolds, you're not a visitor. Sit down. <laughs> Somebody know happy Sabbath. Tell them it's glad are you good to be in God's house today. Just greet somebody in love in Jesus today. We need to greet one another more often. Because God has been good to us. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And may God bless us today as we worship Him. 
in spirit and in truth. At this time, we'll have our children's story that come down. Let us see. This I know. Actually, it's been happening all year, but they, the, the, the 
earthly powers that be are promoting something at the end of this month. What is that? On the 31st. Halloween. Yes. That, you know, that's the biggest holiday of the year. I mean, we think Christmas is it, but Halloween, you see, it's celebrated the whole year. You don't know who Satan's cohorts are. You don't know his where his evil angels are. They are evil angels walking this earth. They are witches. They are warlocks. The witch is the female. The warlock is the male. And their leader is Satan. And he tells them to do things. Okay? And I've said this before. There were two persons on the plane. And they were all, uh, the whole plane, of course, but except for the plane. But everybody on the plane was going to the same plane. And so two people, one said, well, where are you going? Well, I'm going to the one with me. And the other said, well, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to a witch's conference. And he said, what? A what? He said, I'm going to a witch's conference. And so he said, what do you do there? He said, oh, we, we come together and we, we pray. We pray that uh, the family will be separated and that the, we can uh, discourage the family from worshiping God. You know that God? And so this is what we do. And we work on it all year round. And the person was in such disbelief. Like, you, this is a job? You really do this? He said, oh, yeah. He said, this is big time stuff. He said, we work hard every year. And we make sure we target the families so that they will no longer have worship in the home. They will no longer say the name of Jesus. They will just forget about the Sabbath. They will forget the Holy Spirit. And so I just want to let you know, parents, grandparents, and AITs, that's agents in training, that we have to stick to the word of God. The FBI finds truth and promotes truth wherever it stands. And I'm just going to read this very, very short statement. It says, on the night of October 31st, it was believed that the dead came out of the graves and they walked around. Did they really do that? No. Mm -hmm. And they walked around and so they offered up sacrifices and had special feasts to honor them. And the priests of Druid taught them that if they did not do this, when they themselves died, they would be reincarnated as animals instead of people. So it's all built on a lie and, and just no truth. But pretended communication with the dead is the basis of spiritualism. It's the basis of what? Spiritualism. Also, also called spiritism. Which is one of the most dangerous practices in society. For it invites the control of demons. It invites the control of what? Demons. demons. We should have nothing to do with anything connected with spiritism. And that it, it includes participating in Halloween. So you have your marching papers. You know what to do. Stick to the word of God. Stay there. Don't move. The winds are going to get you down. All right. So. Go through your marching papers today. For those of you who are in the sound of my voice, I come downstairs at the end so I can just pass something on to you before you leave. Thank you. Let's bow our heads. Oh, dear Jesus, thank you for truth. Thank you for Jesus, who is truth. Thank you for the great creator. Thank you for the great, oh, just the, the great teacher of all times and the supreme ruler of this universe. Thank you for our pastor. Thank you for this great congregation. We love you. Bless each one of these children. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Let everyone say. Amen. 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 All right, Lord God. See you downstairs at the end.
We know that there has been and still is quite a few people among the blood sick. And I want to mention Sister Hines' grandson, Jalen. And mention his mother, Alexa. To the young future, young folk of this church. We know the devil is going to work hard on our children. So we need to pray that, that God will pull us through. And I know God will. I mentioned my wife also this morning. She's at home sick. Pray for her also. And I know a lot of other you are people in your family that are sick. The Monroe family. Raise your hand if you have anyone in your family that's sick. Just raise your hand. We need communication with the Lord each and every day. And what I'm about to do is to pray for all of us. But the Lord knows that I am not ready. Even though we keep committing adultery on God, God still wants us in our That's love. When we keep turning our backs on him, he still says, please, come to me. So let's bow our heads this morning and seek the Lord in prayer. You may kneel or whatever is comfortable for you. And we want to talk to our master a little bit this morning. Father in heaven, first of all, Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. And Lord, in spite of ourselves, we want to thank you for what you have done for us. Especially in the name of Jesus, who volunteered, Lord, to come down here and give up his life so that we may live. Thank you, Lord, for that precious gift. We will never be able to repay you for that. All you ask, God, is that we be willing to follow you. And we pray, Lord, that you will give us that desire and that zeal to follow you. Life gets hard sometimes. Life is hard now. All across this country, Lord, all we hear about is how high food is. How high gas is going to get. We are living in perilous times, but Lord, we know you are still God. And no matter what comes up on us, as long as we keep our hands in your hands, you will see us through. So, Lord, we ask for that Holy Ghost power that can keep us, to keep our hand in yours. Lord, we're praying this morning for each and every one of our families. The ones who have sickness in their family, Lord, we pray that you will heal them. This is 2022. But, Lord, you healed a long time ago. You're still healing today. There's no difference. You're still God. And you're still able. And so, Lord, we pray that you will heal our church family this morning. Not just physically, Lord, but spiritually also. Bless them, Lord, with the ones that are having financial difficulties. And, Lord, we pray for our church as a whole, as we are about to, Lord, embark on the missionary program. Thank you for our community outreach program. We pray, Lord, that you will lead us and guide us in the right direction. And, Lord, help us all be on one accord. We pray, Lord, and thank you for our pastor, Pastor Duvane. Continue, Lord, to keep him strong. Keep his family, Lord, in your hands. 
We pray, Lord, that our church will continue to study your word. For we know, Lord, in these last days, the only thing that we can stand on is your word. And so we pray, Lord, that you will give us the knowledge to do so. And Lord, today, as Pastor Johnson come before us, give him the Holy Spirit, Lord. Give him what he needs, Lord, to bring us a word from on high. And at the end of his sermon, Lord, we pray that we will have been in contact with thus said the Lord. Keep him, Lord. Keep us, Lord. Most of all, Lord, save us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
And that's what she did. You know, when it comes to Jesus, you don't have to have no money. All you have to do is have the living word of God in your life, being obedient, doing what thus says the Lord, the very best you can. God will fulfill his promise in you, in your life, in your set time. God promised he will not owe anything for the people that up, walk up right before him. So I just thank God for what he has done. You can't beat God giving that out. It says here in Malachi, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, will say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. Shall we pray? Most kind and gracious and loving heavenly Father. Thank you for this great privilege and opportunity. Lord, that we come boldly to your throne of grace, Lord God. We ask, Lord, for to come in your house one more time and just have a nipple with us, Lord God. Lord, Heavenly Father, come in, Lord God, and set upon the throne of our heart. Change us inside out, Lord God. So when we walk through those doors, we can say it's been good to be in your house. Oh, bless this offering, dear Lord. Let it be you for the, your purpose, Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless the one that had it to give. And Lord, bless those that didn't have it to give. And Father, there is one that had to give and would give. Bless them too. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord God, that let everything be said and done to your name, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Johnson was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Do we have any, any folks from Ohio in the house? And he was raised in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, baptized at the age of nine years old. He began studying God's Word, the, the Bible, and the spirit of prophecy and other inspired biblical literature to help prepare him for what he felt at an early age, a calling to the ministry. He was called at the age of nine years old, mm -hmm. baptized at the Glenville Seventh-day Seven Adventist Church in Cleveland, Ohio, by Pastor then Pastor Aaron Brogdon. As a young boy and young man in the Lord, he would win Bible study awards for studying the Bible consistently and applying it to memory and life. Pastor Johnson would go on to attend Oakwood University, then Oakwood College, to study for the ministry. He took some classes at Oak Haven and UG Pines, learned the medical missionary work. And in addition to that, he has served God's church as a Bible worker and evangelist. He accepted the call to serve as pastor for the Illinois Conference of Seventh-day Adventists and has also been privileged to serve in the Michigan Conference and Southwest Region Conference. And his last assignment for the last four years was at the New Life SDA Church in Marion, Arkansas, where he served the people of God there. He is a man who goes where God leads. 
I had the privilege of serving with him in two capacities. Number one, as a Bible worker in South Huntsville for a few years. And number two, he ministered with me for a year in my first assignment at the Mount Zion FDA Church in Scottsdale. We had a good time in the Lord, did we not? And we were blessed there. Pastor Johnson has three sons from the union of his beautiful wife, Sister Johnson. Sons Joseph, Jairus, and John. Any of them here today? Any of the sons? Of, okay. They're not here today, but he has three who have been blessed by the Lord to be engineers and computer specialists. Pastor Johnson is married to Teresa Johnson, who is a longtime teacher at Oakwood Elementary School of the South Central Conference for many years. His goal is to prepare the people to stand in the great day of God by preaching the three angels' message of Jesus Christ. He loves the Lord, and he wants to be ready for Christ's soon return. He says he's privileged to be here today, and we are praising God for the pastor and his family, and we pray for his continual dedication to God. After the next lovely voice of music that we'll hear that prepare our hearts May be in tune to God today. We're about to hear from Him. God bless us. Good morning, Saints. It's a privilege today to uh, have one of our newest members to join the church, Rhonda Harris, to come up and bless our hearts with music. Before she does, um, I just want you to know I, I asked her um, about her ministry and what she would like to do. And she said that, uh, well, she sings in the choir. Mm -hmm. She doesn't normally sing solos, but mm -hmm. this is something, if I ask her, she will gladly do so. Mm -hmm. And I am uh, I'm happy for that. There are members in our church who are joining our church on a regular basis. Uh, if you feel the calling to want to minister through your gift of music, then please let me know. Please let me know. And if I... And I'm always on the lookout. So, you know, be aware of that. And I will more than likely come to you myself and ask. Please be blessed as one that comes to us in our own. Amen. quote from Bible Echo, June 25th, 1894. <clears throat> it is our privilege to have a daily, calm, close, happy walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. We need not be alarmed if the path lies <clears throat> excuse me, through conflict and suffering. There will be battles with the powers of darkness, severe struggles against selfishness and inbred sin. Wickedness prevails <clears throat> at the present time. The perils of the last days thicken around us. And because wickedness abounds, the love of many wax cold. Mm -hmm. This need not be. The meekness and lowliness of Christ, cherished in the heart, will give moral power to every soul. And the victories gained through trust in Christ and persevering, untiring effort and well-doing will give us the peace which passes understanding. Amen. Amen.
So in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said some very powerful words. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. And this was really one of the most powerful sermons that was ever spoken. Heard by multitude. Many of them were not Jews. Christ was so powerful that there was not a building large enough in Palestine to accommodate the crowds that would come to hear this unlettered carpenter. They love to hear his words. They were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power. What made Jesus so powerful was that he lived the truth. He was the truth. Matthew 5, 14, Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, put on a candlestick, and give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now how can we let our light shine? Something has to give. We're going to have to give up something in order to let Jesus shine fully through us. We have to remove the obstacle. We must make a full and unconditional surrender to God, and only God can help us do that. We have to lay everything on our personal Savior. Jesus said, as many as received him, them gave he power to become the sons of God. We must receive him, allow him to come into our lives, and we're going to have power. It's going to be there. You just have to believe. If Christ is in you, you will have power. So God tells us that when we surrender ourselves to God, a new power will take possession of a new heart. Uh, takes possession of a new heart. It is a supernatural work bringing a supernatural element into the human nature. So you're not the same. You've been born again. You've been transformed. You've been chained. Diets have got to change in Babylon. That he would eat right. That he would follow strictly health reform, even though he was in Babylon. He didn't have that motto, while in Babylon, do as the Babylonians do. <laughs> He stood for right. He stood for principle. And it got the attention of his overseer. And his overseer said, well, I don't want my head to be chopped off. But Daniel took, he put the word of God first. Even though his feet on his own finite mind, he thought he was ready. All he did was fall flat on his face. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and made a mess of it himself. Mm -hmm. 
and he tried to use his authority upon this one of his brothers. And the man said, oh, who made you a judge or a ruler over us? Are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Here Moses trying to do the Lord's work without the armor on. Here Moses trying to do God's work going ahead of the Lord. So he met the devil by himself and he had to flee. Sometimes you got to get out of town quick. <laughs> but God was with him. And it took Moses 40 years of having a humble position. A shepherd. No awards. No praise. Just a humble shepherd. 40 long years. God had humbled him. God has to humble us before he can use. Help me to humble myself. Because when you are truly humbled... God can use us. Yeah. Yeah. He'll use us in a marked way. Yeah. Because we will not take glory to ourselves. Yeah. We've all been given a mandate. Fear God, give glory to Him. Yeah. For the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the thousands of waters. Yeah. We've got to live for the glory of God. Paul said, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. That's our mandate. We've got to do everything to the glory of God. Now we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. God wants to fill every Seventh-day Adventist with his Holy Spirit. The servant of God says, if all were willing, all would be. Everything that can be shaken will be. And we are in the sealing time at the same time. Some are being shaken out, moved. Because those holy angels are holding back the wind of strife. Until God's servants. His humble followers, humble followers of the meek and lowly Jesus, until they are sealed, the angels have to hold back the wind of strife because if they let them go before we're sealed, descendants, you have to be circumcised. I'm going to give a sign in your flesh that you are my children. And at one point, if you were not circumcised, you could not be a child of Abraham. You would be this fellowship from the communion. The sign was in the flesh. The time is coming when the sign that we are the children of God are that fact that we are sealed. So when God says God will show his people that they are not saved until they are sealed. So we should all strive. To be seen. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans the 12th chapter and verse 1 and 2. Paul the inspired writer writes these powerful words. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. A living sacrifice. God wants you and I in this year, 2022, October uh, 8, 2022, he wants you and I to be living sacrifices, living saints. We can't be a saint in heaven unless we are a saint on the earth. 
God wants living representatives of his character. And we all know the famous quote, when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. It is later than we think. Romans 12 verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. Now see, the Bible said that the church uh, in the last days would have wheat and tares. We're not all wheat. And hopefully there are no tares here. <laughs> but see, the tares are going to conform to the world. The tares are to become friends with the world. The Bible says that whosoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. We can't bring the world into the church. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. And by beholding, we become changed. Now, how can we be like Jesus? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I want to know how can I live without sin. I pray that prayer every day. Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. Paul said, sin shall not have dominion over you. For you're not under the law, but under grace. Yeah. There's an atmosphere of grace that surrounds this whole world. And all of us can breathe into the atmosphere of grace if we are in tune with God. And we become stronger and stronger and stronger each day because we are living in the atmosphere of grace. And we're able to plug in to that power and say his grace is sufficient. Our weakness is made perfect in his strength. Abound. Grace much more about how was Jesus able to live without sin and develop a perfect character even though he grew up in Nazareth. He was connected to a power out of and beyond himself. He depended upon his father. He didn't use his divine power. He prayed. He knew how to pray without ceasing. See, all of us have different gifts. We could preach, teach, sing, run. We were driving down a two-lane highway, and all of a sudden, the steering wheel came off the car. And I was sitting on the other side just praying. I was praying all the way there because I love to pray. Before I go to church, I love to lock up with God and pray. So I looked over and saw the man frantically trying to put the steering wheel back on the wheel. And you probably know the young man that was driving, uh, Alfonso Green. <laughs> the man was frantically trying to put the steering wheel back on the car. And, and, and uh, all of a sudden, the car just went to a stop uh, on the side of the road. And he put the steering wheel back on and, and we went on the church. <laughs> We didn't have time to pray, but God knew. God goes ahead of us. He's before us. He's behind us. He knows the future. And he always sends those angels to protect us. Angels that excel in strength. All of you have a guardian angel. And Ellen White says, we can, through the exercise of faith and prayer, call to our aid a retinue of holy angels that will guard us from every corrupting influence. Servant of God says, invisible armies of light and power attend the meek and lowly ones that believe and claim the promises of God. So we have to be aware. Angels are there to protect us, to shield us, to guide us. I would have to drive 800 miles a week to pray in different churches, to preach. And I would pass by trucks and accidents and cars on fire. Amen. 
angels are faithful to their trust. Yeah. Even though we're not able to watch all the time, I have a commercial driver's license, yet I did not depend upon my skill. I depend upon those powerful angels who are powerful. They can lift up a car. They can turn a truck around. They can do it all because they excel in strength. Yes, sir. And when yes, we depend sir. upon God, he will help us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's a very present help in trouble. Not tomorrow, not next week. Whenever you need him, he is there. Yes. And he will hear and answer your prayer. He will not put upon you more than what you can bear. That's why we can't complain when we're going through trials. Amen. We praise God in good times as well as in bad times because we know that God has everything under his control. Yes, he Amen. Amen. So we've got to have faith. We've got to believe. We've got to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding in every situation and acknowledge God. Lord, is this your way? And he will direct your paths. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Did the Lord lead you here today? He wants to. I believe he led you here. You're not here by accident. I see some folk here that weren't here last week. You know, I got here last Sabbath. I said, listen, listen to the whole service. I got here at the only one prayer service. And listen to the whole service. I said, I said to myself, this church is going to be packed within a year's time. So I advise all of you who are in the Valley of Decision, make this your home. Amen. These are the folks that are going to be sealed, that are going to be ready when the sifting time, see the, the, the shaking time goes into the sifting time. It's going to get hard. We will not be able to buy or sell at any price. It's coming. At all my prayer meetings. He called Peter, James, and John. Let's go up to this mountain. And let's pray. They said in their mind, man, we done worked all day. I'm tired to hear Christ leading the way, climbing up this real tall mountain. And they were tired, but they kept following Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus put Peter, James, and John over here, but he went into a little distance and he, he prayed. And, and they were supposed to pray too. And they, they prayed for a while, but they got a little tired. And they all slumbered and slept. Mm. But thank God Jesus didn't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Whenever he called an all night prayer meeting, he was there and he stayed up all night too. <laughs> and the disciples were in a deep sleep. You know, we we're talking about sleeping today. And, and sometimes I'd be up there preaching, I look at my head out, he'd be asleep. <laughs> The man, if he sleep, man, what about everybody else? <laughs> but uh, Christ kept on praying, kept on persevering, kept on petitioning his Father for special grace to go through these times of trouble, get enemy, and the horrors of Calvary. He kept on praying because he knew he needed special power. So as he prayed, the divinity within him began to ooze out. And his divinity above him came and met him at the same spot. And Christ was transfigured. His clothes turned white. His hair and head turned white. He began to glow with the very glory of God. 
and Moses and Elijah came to give him instruction, minute detail about what he was about ready to go through. Amen. He was transfigured. Yes. And not only did Moses and Elijah come, but the Father himself came here in a cloud. Yes. And he said, this is my beloved son. Yes. Yes. Hear ye him. Yes. God will give you special grace to go through these special times. He wants to pour out his spirit upon the whole church. Amen. That which happened to the disciples on the day of Pentecost Amen. must happen to Amen. you and I. Amen. And that should be our top priority. Amen. The servant of God says the revival and a reformation among us is the greatest and most urgent of our needs. And to seek this should be our first word. We get right with God. We clear the way so that there is nothing between our soul and our Savior. And God will pour out His Spirit upon us without measure. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Can you receive it? Now, I don't like to preach long, but we want to know if we... I'll say you need to sit down now, brother. <laughs> I'm ready to go home and eat. <laughs> so I will put myself in that situation. How long do I have? But let's turn to Psalm 15. Because we want to be in that number that, that will be saved. We want to make it to heaven. I don't want to be lost. I don't want anybody in this room lost. God does not want anyone here lost. He is not willing that any should perish. Don't ever forget that when you're on your knees and pray. Don't ever forget that when you feel guilty and stained with sin. Don't ever feel, don't ever forget that God wants your salvation. And the reason why he hasn't come back is because he's waiting for you. But who will make it to heaven? Who will let their light shine? Psalm 15, as we close this message out. Psalm 15, verse 1 says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? And who will remain? Who will not allow themselves to be shaken out? When the going gets rough, who shall abide? Who shall remain? Who shall have endurance? You see, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that maintains the standard of righteousness will be saved. Don't lower the standard. Don't follow the crowd. Don't conform to the world. Don't try to please man and please God at the same time. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Who will make it to heaven? And David, under inspiration, answers the question, he that walketh uprightly. In order for you to walk uprightly, you've got to walk with God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to turn that TV off and you wonder, what you going to do? God says, walk with me. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness. That's doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason. Righteousness. He that speaketh the truth in his heart. Don't just speak it intellectually. Allow this truth to transform your life. The servant of God says the world will be convinced not by what the pulpit preaches, but by what the church lives. He that backbiteth not tongue. You know, it's the hardest thing in the world to control your tongue. Mm -hmm. It's hard not to gossip, not to backbite, not to tear down, not to criticize. We've got to have the anointing of the Holy Ghost on us on a moment-by-moment -moment basis because every idle word that man shall speak, they will have to give an account thereof in the days of judgment, for by our words will be done. The same as a perfect man. 
and is able to bridle the whole body. James says that. Again, verse 3, he that backbiteth not his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh a reproach against his neighbor. In his eyes, a vile person is condemned. You know, out of those folks that are lying, folks that want to stay in office because they say, well, I won the election anyway. <laughs> But he honoreth them to fear the Lord. He that swears to his own hurt and changes not. He that don't, he that does not take interest on his money that he lends out. I lent you a hundred dollars, but you gotta pay me back a hundred and ten. Oh no. Or taking the reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. So when we allow Jesus to come into our hearts, he's going to save us. Have you ever displayed something softly? God wants us to be different. He wants us to change. If we're going to be saved, we're going to have to come out. You see. Come out from the world. 2 Corinthians 6. As we close this message out, Second Corinthians 6 verse 14 says be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers be careful who our friends are for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness and what concord hath Christ with Belial or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You got to change now. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. See, then there are conditions for Christ and for God to receive us. We've got to change our position. I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters. I want to be saved. I want victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. I want to be accounted worthy. I want to stand on the sea of glass with the rest of the 144,000. I want victory over sin. I want to develop a perfect character. I'm striving. I'm not there yet. I wonder, is there one today who would say, Lord, I want to join your army. I'm tired of a life of sin. Tomorrow is not promised. Is there one today? If so, raise your hand. You want Christ in your life? You want His grace? Make another appeal and say, one today you would say, Lord, I, I want to live powerful, a powerful life. You see, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. The only reason why we slip and slide and sin is because we don't have on the whole armor. We know the truth in our head, but we haven't put it into practice. And the devil was able to beat us up. And we're sometimes up and we're sometimes down, but God wants us to change. God in our lives. You 
want revival, you want reformation, you want the Holy Ghost to take charge of your life, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? If you want special prayer, I invite you to raise your hand. If possible, come forward for special prayer. If possible, you can raise your hand, come forward for special prayer. We're going to come down and, and, and kneel right here. God hears prayer. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I call upon your name. I want change in my life. I don't want to be like everybody else. Everybody else is not going to be saved. I'm down on the ground and I want you all to, if possible, if you can, kneel. Dear Lord, we want you in our lives. We want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We know the time of trouble has come for some, but we know that it's going to come for us soon. And you, are, you have told us in your word at the commencement of the time of trouble, we were filled with the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost fills us, when we're sealed, when we are recipients of the former and latter rain, the angels can let go those winds and we can go with the time of trouble, the little time of trouble, and then the great time of trouble when probation closes. Because you said, my cry, why on others thou art calling? Do not pass me by. Don't pass any one of us by. Fill us with your spirits. Help us to get serious about serving you. Help us to be sober. Be vigilant because the adversary, the devil, he's like a roaring lion. We can't see him, but we can feel his power. May we be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. May we put on the whole armor. We don't have to be weakling today. We can be strong. We don't have to be Cowards, we can be bold. So please be with us. Bless us and keep us, O oh Lord. We will give you all the praise and glory. Change us, Lord. Make us new creatures in Christ. Hear our prayer, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed by the word of God today. What a spirit filled word. What a thoughtful word. That's why the scripture says, Sila, rest in the word and meditate on it. When you do that, we we'll allow the word to change us. Glad to see some of my friends that slipped in today. Good to see the Smith family. I see you back there. We just wave your hands up. Good to see you now. We're thankful that you. Us all, we're in the right place at the right time. We need to hear that. Jesus was speaking to us. I don't know what you heard. Some, some may have heard, I, I need to give my life totally over to him. Some may have heard, I need special prayer. Some may have heard, I need Bible study. Some may have heard, I need to be baptized. Some may have heard, I need to join this church that's still marching the line. I don't know what you heard. But we're here with you because God is with us. And we're here together as a family of God, as a people of God. And so as we prepare to stand and sing our closing hymn, if you need to see me, I'll, I'll be in the back. Come shake the preacher's hand. And we invite you to come back and worship with us again. We're better because you're here today. Hey, we stand for the final hymn of worship. Wonderful words of life.
nine board members board meeting tomorrow, 10 a.m. virtually. And then for the building committee, if, you, if I can meet with you immediately following the service, up to five minutes. We can meet on the piano side right after the service. I don't know about you, it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. Thank you. 